A moment of significant change or a turning point, altering your course, is known as an inflection point. In business, these moments have a significant impact in many ways. That's why we're speaking with leaders from across the asset management industry to hear the stories of their inflection points and the impact they've had on their journeys. Join me and my colleague, Mark Spina, as we explore the business of being in business with insights that can help you wherever you may find yourself. This is Inflection Points. Hello, everyone. I'm Mark Spina, president and COO here at Flex Networks. I'm also the co-host of Inflection Points. I'm joined today by Shanna Weber. It's a pleasure to have Shanna here today. I will give a quick intro into Shanna and her background, and then I'll let her add, refine, adjust as she uh, sees fit. So uh, we're talking with Shanna. Shanna is the Managing Director of Corporate Strategy at Charles Schwab. She leads a team focused on identifying near-term growth opportunities and also supporting the long-term strategic planning across the enterprise. And for those of you familiar with Schwab, as most of you are, it's a massive uh, enterprise. Uh, and we hope to learn a bit about it today. Uh, Shanna earned her MBA from the University of Arizona and dual BS degrees in finance and management from Arizona State University. Additionally, uh, she completed her SIFMA designation at Wharton. She's had a tremendous amount of interesting and diverse experience in a relatively short period of time. It's a pleasure again to welcome Shanna Weber. Shanna, did I miss anything? No, Mark, you got it, except you did miss the fact that we worked together for a number of years, a uh, decade or so ago. <laughs> uh, I was going to weave that in later on, but we did indeed uh, uh, work together. It's, I look, John, it's like 15 plus years ago. Uh, Thanks guess, for that reminder. <laughs> <laughs> a lot has happened, almost uh, all positive from a career perspective. So congratulations. On, Thank you. on your success and it's great to uh to reconnect before before we get into the professional realm we like to talk uh to our guests about some of the early days some of the precursor events that shaped formed created trajectory changes uh to their lives that then in turn led to career and professional uh trajectory so if you go back in what I like to think of as the, the way back machine channel, further back than even our uh, coexistence at ING Voya, uh, what were some of your formative inflection points? If you think about friends, family, schooling, activities, adventures, your choice could be any or all of the above. I, you know, I think, I think back probably the most influential aspect of my life was my family um, growing up and uh, a lot of different generations within my family to, to impact how I show up at work and, and where I got to today. Uh, starting with my grandfather, he was um, a police officer in uh, California, highway patrol officer, um, good old chips. Chips, good old chips. Uh -huh. nice. awesome. that was my grandpa. And so um, being in the force and in working every day with the public and with the people, he uh, taught me the importance of building strong relationships with people, being honest, being truthful, um, being forthright, and always raised all of us grandkids to, to really be the best people we can to help others, to do our service to the community. And that stuck with me all through my life. Um, today, I'm very involved with a lot of diversity and inclusion initiatives across our industry. Um, including working with Jillian, who's in WE, um, Women in ETFs. Uh, we've been working together a number of years. And uh, I have just always had a passion for that, as well as treating people um, the best that I can, because it's important to respect others, respect others' views and their opinions. And I learned a lot of that from my grandpa. Um, and he would even yell at all of us cousins when we were picking on each other or um, you know, playing and messing around with each other to be nice to each other and, then, and to love and respect each other. And it was funny because we all couldn't figure out why on earth we'd need to be nice to our mean cousins. But um, it worked out in the, in the end for us. We're all really close still. Um, the other one would be my mom. Uh, go ahead. I was going to say, so come make sure we come back to your mom. Let's stick with your grandfather for a moment. 
was it was it overtly instructional or observational? Am I am, should I be thinking about a bunch of grandkids in a circle listening to grandpa or <laughs> listening to grandpa? No, um, okay. it's funny because my grandfather was uh, very social. Uh, mm. We used to say he, you know, king of the court type of um, grandpa. His uh, icon was John Wayne, and so we'd have John Wayne parties where everybody dress up in oh, old western awesome. gear, and we'd serve. Um, uh, Reuben sandwiches and have horses and do stuff like that. And just wa watching how my grandfather interacted with his old Navy buddies, with their children. It was very, um, everybody was, we didn't know who we were actually biologically related to because I, everybody I, was sort of family. I um, and, and, and he would, he would discipline, uh, people, whether it be his children or other people's children or friends, for you know acts of unkindness and for disrespect and he was very adamant to uh portray those behaviors that he wanted us to follow but he would call us on it so when you say overtly i'd be once in a while there'd be definitely a a, a, a reckoning if we were misbehaving in the way that he didn't see as respectful to others and so um but it was just more how he treated his friends and how he treated people that he worked with um that that just penetrated us and and serving of yourselves and and giving to others that we'd witnessed through all of the reunions all of the parties all of the get-togethers uh so and then my mom kind of reiterated that and uh coming back to my mom hard work was always something in my family that existed we come from a very um you know blue collar uh, working class uh, family my mother was in um, public education, uh, again, I said my grandfather in service, um, police service, and so just the having to, you know, work really hard. My mom held multiple jobs when I was young to keep food on the table and keep us um, uh, out of debt and, and involved in the sports that I wanted to play. She really stepped up. She showed there's no such thing as an eight-hour workday um, for anybody, and I took after a lot of that in my schooling. And so my mom. Uh, again you know we tried to figure out how i was going to pay for college and my mom's i got into a couple of really good schools um and we looked at the cost and said we just can't do it so um i picked the the best public school for business because i knew it's going to be in business and that was arizona state and went down there and my mom said i can afford four years of tuition and then you have to pay for the rest she did not realize that I was going to take that to the full extent, which included summer session, winter session, <laughs> extra activities. Um, so I was doing about 20 credit hours a semester, maxing out um, my opportunity because we work hard for what we want. And it really put the discipline in me. I worked uh, 30 hours a week, did sorority stuff, had you know multiple uh, majors going on, minors. I was involved with friends and just kind of a, you just keep running on all full steam which is was good training at a school like Arizona State because there was a lot of things that I could be doing otherwise. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of sidetrack uh, ways you can go there, but it kept me on the straight and narrow and really, as you know, working, I'm, I'm full force ahead. I really enjoy getting things done and um, putting in the effort to, to see things to conclusion. So I think that comes really from my, my mom and my uh, grandfather. So you said, as you as you can see or as you know, and, and it's so interesting, China, because doing these uh, podcasts, you you get to know people um, in a more in depth way. You you and I have known each other for a very long time. Uh, everything you you just shared aligns perfectly with like how I seen and observed you in the workplace, but I, I had none of that background. Right. So now yeah. <laughs> it, it, makes, it makes it makes complete uh, it makes complete sense and appreciate you sharing those examples. I think family type examples and the for, formational foundational type of uh, role that they play in in our lives, if only observational, you could definitely see how it how it impacts career trajectories. Definitely. Yeah. Super and, cool. you know, I didn't think about it until you asked me the, the question. I think that's just, you know, it's ingrained in who you are and how you grew up. But I definitely would tie it back to those roots. Let's let's move. Let's move from the Arizona state or you could start there. But like what were moving into the professional realm? What were some of the precursor 
inflection points that you've experienced or in, throughout your career? Um, colleagues or mentors, it could be professional development or training, it could be a network, previous jobs or roles that you could think, I think we've all had um, either a role, a manager, a firm that, you know, it stands out as a crucible type moment or period or phase in your career. Any of those for you? I think there's probably two I'd, I'd reflect on as, as the crucibles of my career and, and how I've made it through a, a lot of different change. The first is right out of college, I started at Arthur Anderson and I was there for about a year before they got taken down. And I will say the learnings of early in the career that nothing is guaranteed, that change will happen, that you have to move on and stay strong and positive. I'm lucky I learned that when I was 23 um, and didn't have to learn that when I was you know, 40 because it would be a lot harder lesson at that point. And so Super uh, I think just lesson, going right? through to have it. Yeah, just stage. going yeah. through that. Yep. It, it was great. I, I, at the time, it wasn't great, but uh, getting through it and being like, I have to find a new job. And I thought this was going to be my career path and um, starting over and um, making it through and, and just staying positive that it'll all figure itself out. And I learned that early. And I think that's really helped in a lot of the, the roles I've had because everything always changes and there's always new structures and new orgs and new managers and new leaders. And just being able to say, well, we'll get through this, we'll figure it out. Um, it'll work itself out. And so that I think that's one that kept me really positive when we go through change in our industry. There's just been so much um, and it's constant and it, it, that definitely helps me. The other one actually is the role um, where you and I first met. Um, when I was at ING, I was fairly young, um, about 25, and my manager was let go and I was the sole <laughs> participant in product development for um, about six months. And we decided to launch some really complicated products, <laughs> uh, closed end fund space, and working with um, you I'm and many thankful others. Thankful that you're using we and, and not putting this <laughs> all on me. Thank you for that. Keep going. <laughs> um, you know, working with some you know ex experts in the industry and learning from them, but also you know people like you yourself, my uh, um, future managers, our, our CEO at the time just really said, you know what, Shannon, you can do this. We have faith in you. You can figure it out. We'll, we'll help support you. It gave me the confidence early on in my career that you will make mistakes and you will figure them out and that I really can, can do more than I probably would have given myself credit for. And I think having that catalyst um, to do something new that the firm's never done. So nobody, I couldn't follow in somebody's footsteps of this is how we do it. Uh, and really having to learn from a lot of different people and having people push me um, and have confidence in me really helped set me in a good space for, I don't sweat the small stuff. I don't freak out when there's errors. I'm like, yeah, we'll figure it out. We can solve it. I've, you know, it's, I've done it before. We'll do it again. Uh, gave it to me again early on. That really helps the way I approach things throughout my career. It's, uh, learning. I love the learning and I love the push and I love the motivation to do things new and help our investors solve for their problems and we can do it together and we will figure it out is sort of the approach I've always had. I'm, I'm smirking. It, it won't come through on camera and I won't attempt to, to move the screen around, but to my immediate left, there's a, <clears throat> there's a large piece of paper with sayings that I utilize routinely that my colleagues to my right have have put up on the board because they hear it so many times and at the very top of that list is we will figure it out right so i i completely maybe agree. i got that from you <laughs> I, I think or maybe we both had to figure it out back then when we were doing uh kind of creative product development and innovative things it was uh <clears throat> we were all uh figuring it out together and it, and it worked actually and it worked. not every time but in the aggregate worked in a, in a very big way so you went on, Shana, you went on to, um, to, to Janice and then, and then time, um, largely your career, early part of the career was in, was in asset management. You've moved mm -hmm. more recently into corporate strategy as a career read, like that's an inflection point that moved from asset management to corporate strategy. Yes. So talk us through what, 
what um, what led you to make that move? Um, at, at the beauty of working at an organization like Schwab is you get those opportunities, right? So I think working at a firm that has multiple organizations within it uh, allowed me the chance to make a leap to a new area without leaving, you know, my home, my safe home. And a lot of the a lot of it was having sponsors that pushed me into stretching my wings, right? So um, some managers that I had in the past and, and um, really respect asked me to do new roles outside of asset management and said, um, I'd love for you to lead our retirement income um, uh, initiative. And I said, I, you know, what does that mean? And the answer was, I don't know, you'll figure it out, uh, which we do, um, which I do. And I did. And I think that the organ being able to be seen as a leader, a thought leader, and and somebody who can solve problems, and then having the ability within a company to go do that in different areas was a great opportunity for me because I don't know if I would have jumped ship um, to change career paths, but I was gently nudged into it within a safe environment. So while it was totally new and um, different, it was still with people I knew, um, organizations within that I understood. But coming out of asset management and going to corporate strategy for a firm like Schwab, I and mean, we're almost $8 billion, we've got um, an advisor network, we have a retirement platform, we have a bank, we have um, direct, in, uh, direct investors, we have um, financial consultants, asset management. Uh, the breadth of projects that I get exposed to is very exciting and intimidating, to be honest. And I have to learn. I, I love the opportunity. I am learning constantly in this role um, because there's so many avenues, different projects we work on. And so I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, and it's hard because I've been such an expert in asset management that I'm always, I feel like I knew who I could call or I knew the answer or I you know, knew where we could go. And this new role is, I'm not sure we'll have to find out. So it's been a, it's been kind of a, fresh start for me in midpoint in my career i think it's uh really good career advice you're giving though maybe not uh not intentionally it is really good career advice i, I think many people uh who want to do something else think they have to do it outside of the firm that they're in uh, or currently mm -hmm. reside within. And the, the career advice for people is to look around. Like what, if you push the envelope, if you could uh, kind of uh, reimagine your skills and capabilities in a different role within the firm, what would it, you, you, you took a leap without leaving home. I like that. Like that's, yeah. uh, that's really good, I think, career advice uh, for, for, for people to, to consider and really take action. Uh, take action on. I think it's and part of it was I asked for more uh, when mm -hmm. we did a re we did we went through this one you reorg have to ask, where we, right you yeah we I, yeah we went through this reorg we smooched a whole bunch of groups together we you know had a new org and when we were going through that I said you know I'd really like more I'd really like to take on more and and you know lead a larger initiative and I had sponsors that said I think you can do it and really you know advocated for me to the senior leadership to to move me um, up in those roles. And I think it was a great opportunity, but I, I really encourage people to let their managers and, and, you know, network know that they are ready for the next thing. Because if you don't, if you don't voice that people might feel you say you're very content and, you know, and be willing to keep you where you are. If you voice it, a lot of your advocates will look for opportunities um, or even create opportunities for you. Uh, totally. I totally agree. You had mentioned that the size, scope, diversity of the firm, right? And and I would imagine in in a corporate strategy role that one of the both amazing uh, opportunities and persistent challenges is prioritization, right? Mm -hmm. You have a close to eight trillion in in customer assets. Uh, you're, you're doing innovative things, launching personal personalized indexing. I, I saw in, in doing a bit of research for, for the episode, you, from a culture perspective, uh, you're listed as one of the best employers for new graduates. Like, are, are there any of those things that kind of resonate with you as something of, uh, of interest and, and how does it shape into a, a potential inflection point for the organization? 
I think you, you mentioned, you know, great place for new employees to work. We also, you know, consistently rank well in the JD Power Associates um, in place employers, lead employers. Uh, we get very strong engagement scores when we do our um, Nexus engagement surveys. I think being that big of a firm, um, we, we joke, it's like moving the Titanic, right? Um, but having a mindset for our leaders to empower our people to continue to um, listen to new ideas, to embrace uh, the diversity of thought, Absolutely. of background, of education, of knowledge, of experience, and, and weave that into our decision making allows us to slowly turn the Titanic um, as we go because we're doing it at, you know, I guess you'd say all rudders, right? Um, it's not just from the top. And right. I, I've enjoyed that experience of working at a firm that does view. We have a, an example is we have a contest where everybody submits a new innovative idea and it gets vetted through all different channels and senior leadership. And then there's, you know, kind of one that's selected. Awesome. Um, as an innovative way that we can do business differently, and it is a, a bottom-up roots, you know, roots effort, and it's it's been great. We've had some really great projects come out of there, and so I think you know, as a corporate leader, a lot of what I try to do is listen to my partners, listen to um, my uh, peers of what they're thinking, what they're struggling with, and then weave that into what we're focusing on from the top-down view, um, and providing the context of why we're doing things, how we're thinking of things, where we want to go, but then taking that feedback from all the different people who are closer to our client and our channels. And that's the culture at the firm uh, that is is great and supportive of that. Um, but there's a lot going on too. I mean, we have a prioritization list that's, you know, <laughs> pages long of things that we're focusing on across the firm. And the prioritization is, Honestly, how does this help the client? How do we best support the client? What needs to be done first? So it's a great culture to support prioritization. That sounds like an excellent uh, navigational tool, right? What, what's what's in the best interest of the of the client? Let's do that first. That that makes yeah. a, a ton of sense. So you've taken us through pre-professional, formative uh, people. Uh, early stage career, you've, you've brought us current in, in the corporate strategy role. Uh, thinking ahead, like what are some of the ongoing sources of inspiration and motivation that makes you more likely uh, to find or achieve positive inflection points? Meaning, maybe translated, what do you do outside of work that keeps you inspired inside of work? I am very passionate about increasing and improving the the diversity and inclusion in our um, industry and i think that my whole life i've always tried to build networks and friends and groups and um, partnerships that provide me new information a new viewpoint a new way to look at things a uh, new background to take into consideration and so i think as we as an industry strive forward in the diversity initiative it's not just increasing the numbers which is very important and i am very proactive in how we increase numbers but it's more once we get those numbers into the ecosystem how do we leverage those great insights the different viewpoints and so um my long-term passion is to do some coaching for young women and people of color in their midpoints in their careers and so i'm continuously building skills to help my current uh, peers, partners, uh, direct reports, and various uh, people across the industry to, to grow and to do that um, that kind of next step. And so I've done a strengths coach, uh, Gallup strengths coach certifications. I have done a number of diversity and inclusion trainings at some great universities. And I bring that to work every day and practice those skills with mentorships, with uh, educational programs in our community, uh, with nonprofit organizations like Women in ETFs and some others, um, EEEC. Um, there's a number of ways that I really try and get involved with how do we increase the knowledge about the industry to um, underrepresented groups? How do we create a passion for what we do for our clients in this industry, helping them achieve their long-term goals and um, ultimately bring new viewpoints in and embrace those and leverage those within our um, industry. So that's something that 
constantly gets me learning new techniques, reading new books, um, doing research, podcasts, uh, you know, um, documentaries to learn, and then bringing that every day to the environment that I work in to have hopefully expand that knowledge that we have as an industry from all of the great resources we're tapping. That's awesome. Uh, thank you for sharing. Thank you for those efforts uh, in, in that space, having done some work there as well. Uh, Shan, I agree. I think there's a lot of focus on the headline number of number of employees, but recruiting recruiting is where it starts, right? How do you, how do you get diverse and inclusive numbers in, into the firm, into particular roles, functions? Um, how do you retain those people? Right. And then and to your point, how do you help how do you help those individuals advance, grow, and then take up the same mantle themselves? Yes. Yeah. So it, it's fun and it's a long road path that we're all on, um, hopefully together. And I, I enjoy it. So it does give me motivation every day to even when I have to look at a spreadsheet all day long, I'm motivated by <laughs> what I'm bringing to the table. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let's wrap it there. I want to say thank you to Shanna. A big thank you to our listeners for your time, allowing us uh, both to occupy and potentially enhance your mind space. Uh, both are valuable. Uh, we are a work in progress, as Shanna just said. Uh, um, as people, we are definitely a work in progress as a podcast. Uh, if you picked up anything of interest, please subscribe, uh, leave a rating and review. And until next time, uh, keep looking for and creating your next inflection point. Thank you, Shanna. Thank you, Mark. It was fun. The information contained in this recording is provided as is for educational and informational purposes only and should not serve as the basis for any trading or investing decisions. Flex Networks makes no representations and disclaims all express, implied, and statutory warranties of any kind to any viewer, listener, or other third party. Neither Flex Networks nor any of its affiliates make any endorsement of any particular company, security, product, or financial strategy, and nothing contained in this recording should be construed as investment advice. Investors should undertake their own due diligence and carefully evaluate companies before investing.